Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are doing good. After four days, I'm making a video. So in the last video, if you remember, we had started greedy. We solved three basic problems and we will continue to solve greedy and we will try to finish this topic as soon as possible. So before solving today's problems, I would like to just take some time to tell you about this wonderful ebook. This is an ebook which is on data structures and algorithms. So if you're preparing for coding interviews, uh, data structures and algorithms is a very important, it's actually a must do for anyone who is preparing for interviews. So this ebook has 90 plus DS algo chapters and also it includes HR questions, 15 plus HR questions. Sometimes some people find it difficult to answer them and it's very helpful, this, uh, these HR questions. So I will just take you uh, through the book, some parts of it, and I'll show you what all is there. There are sorting algorithms. Sorting is basic and it's used everywhere. So sorting is there. Before that, there's a nice introduction for omega time complexity and all that and the searching algorithms, data structures, uh, the tree data structure, graph, all of that. And the best part about the ebook is that if you click on this link, you would go to this, the, this page directly and you can see how well organized and how neatly the author has done it. The author is no one but a software engineer actually. He is also a software engineer and he has worked in many uh, multinational companies and has a lot of experience and uh, he has written this. So that is why you can trust this. It is for an affordable price. Do check it out. The link will be in the description. Please do check it out and buy it. So let us move on. Today's uh, first problem is called as swap and maximize. So what is the problem? Problem is given an array of n elements, consider a circular array. So the last element is followed by the first element. This is very obvious to understand. So the task is to find maximum sum of difference, maximum sum of difference between consecutive elements with rearrangement of array elements allowed. So maximum sum of difference between consecutive elements they have explained over here by giving the expression also. Okay, so let us see some test case examples. For example, if the array given to us is this, so what will be the maximum possible difference of consecutive elements? So for this array, what is the answer going to be? It is going to be uh, absolute of 4 minus 2 plus absolute of 2 minus 1 plus absolute of 1 minus 8. And because it is a circular array, 8 is followed by 1. So plus, so what is this going to give us? This is 2 plus 1, 3 plus 7, 10 plus 4, 14. But the question is, is this maximum? we have to maximize this answer. So how to rearrange the array such that we get the maximum possible sum if we do the summation like this? This is what they mean when they say maximum sum of difference, difference between consecutive elements, maximum sum we have to find and the absolute difference. So if you try to take many test case examples and if you try to manually do it, you will finally come to a conclusion that the algorithm to be followed for this problem is first step is sort the array. Sort the array, okay. Then how to rearrange? Now we have to rearrange. So how to rearrange it? We will do something like this. We will do, uh, we will say, we will put first element, 
then last element then second element then we'll put second last element like this we will arrange i will show you with an example see the question uh, the input in the given question is this right the input is this so first step step one will be sort the array okay i have sorted the array now i'll arrange the array like this i will take the first element then i will take first i took the first element then i will take the last element then i will take the second element then i will take the second last element like this if i arrange if this is my arrangement then i will get the maximum sum of absolute difference between consecutive elements so this arrangement is required so once you do this arrangement just find out the sum how to do this arrangement very easy take two pointers so after sorting the array we just need to take two pointers so after we have sorted the array for example if i will actually write it so after sorting the array suppose this is the sorted array now take two pointers let us say pointer l and pointer r l is in the first element r is in the last element take another additional vector say vector b or array take another additional array b and then go on filling the values like move this pointer move this pointer move this l pointer forward move this r pointer backward and store it so one will be stored then eight eight will be stored then you move so l will point over here now l will be pointing here then r will be pointing here so then you will put two then you will put four like that so this is actually a very fundamental problem i'll just show you the code which i already submitted the solutions will be in the description please check the description for the solution but i'll just show you the code now so i have just taken the input so this is the input and i have sorted the array then i have taken two variables l and r and just a two pointer approach and i am just uh, you know moving the two pointers and storing the rearranged array actually i don't need a separate array i want to mention one more thing that uh, i don't think you will need a sep or maybe you will need a separate array yeah no yeah you might need a separate array tell me if you can do it without a separate array i have done it using extra array tell me if you know how to do it without in any array. and don't forget that when you have odd elements you have to check for this condition as for even elements it will be fine for odd elements you have to include the middle element right so this is a must condition so you might go wrong if you don't include this statement this statement is important if there are odd number of elements in the input array then just find the sum then the problem becomes actually easy and don't forget as it is a circular array you have to also find out uh first element minus last element because that will be consecutive in a circular array first and last element are consecutive you can check the description i will put this solution over there but i think you would have understood the logic how to solve this problem just rewind the video and watch it again if you didn't you will definitely understand it's an easy it's a basic problem actually let us go to next problem next problem is given an array find the maximum product possible with subset of elements whenever they say subset and maximum product or whatever maximum sum subset usually it will be greedy or if it is advanced problem it will be dynamic programming back tracking so if it's a simple problem you it will be greedy approach only and in these kind of approaches you have to do some kind of sorting or you have to just use common sense so you have to be patient in solving these kind of problems like why i'm saying this is because some test cases some corner test cases you might miss out 
I will show you in this problem. There are some test cases you might miss out. It is actually an easy problem only. How will you find maximum product? Obviously, anyone can say that you have to include all the positive elements. And if there are even number of negative elements, you will include even number of negative elements. That means what I'm trying to say is, for example, let us say, for example, uh, our given array is something like minus two, sorry, uh, uh, let us say our given array is 2, 4, 8, 0, 6, minus 1. I have to find a subset with maximum product. How to find subset? What does it mean by subset? Subset and subarray difference is that subarray should be continuous. Subset can be any elements, any elements from the array. So how to find the subset? Obviously, we will take all the positive elements, okay? And as we will not consider zero because if we take zero, the product will become zero. So common sense, we won't take zeros. And now we'll check for negative elements. There is only one negative, so we won't take it. But what if there was one more minus two? Then we will take both these elements. Why? Because minus one into minus two will be plus two. So if there are even number or number of negative numbers, so there will be many test cases now. So first thing is, so first thing in this problem is what? In this problem, the first and foremost thing is don't take zeros. So obvious thing is don't take zeros. Okay. Second thing is sort the array. Uh, I guess you will have to sort the array because if there are multiple number of negative elements with same value, you will not know how to do it. I guess you will have to sort the array. I'm not so sure. So sort the array and then find out uh, how many negative elements are there. So the game is actually with negative elements. We will obviously take all the positive elements. All the positive elements will definitely be taken. So the game is only left with negative elements. So now what will happen is, for example, what I'm trying to say is, if suppose the array is something like this. So in this array, we can see that there are four neg negative elements, right? and four is an even number. So if there are even number of negative elements, ultimately product will be positive only. So we will take all these four. But what if, what if the array was this? What if this minus one was not there? What if this was the array? Minus three, mi minus four, minus three, minus two, zero, one, two, three. What if this was the array? Then what would we do? Then if you closely observe, we will take only these and we will neglect this. Why? Because we can't take odd number of negative elements. And why we are only considering this? Because absolute value, listen to me carefully, absolute value of these numbers is definitely going to be greater than this one. So the game is just that. Find out how many negative elements are there. If there are odd negative elements, just leave the smallest, uh, sorry, just leave out the negative element with smallest absolute value. Or I can say leave out the largest negative element. Something like that only you can say. But if this was the array, okay. If this was the array, then we will leave out only this one, but we will consider these four. So this is what I'm saying. This is the test case you might go wrong. So because there are three minus twos, 
don't leave out all the three. Leave out only one. Common sense, but sometimes you might miss this. So that's all this problem is actually. There's nothing else. Very easy problem. So that's all for this video. Please uh, share the channel with all your friends. Subscribe to the channel and hit the like button if you like my work. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care, stay safe, keep learning, keep growing, and stay tuned. Bye.